Hey viewers, welcome to another game as a casual pro gamer. Today we are doing Voy Boy, and Voy Boy is going to play Katarina. Yes, you heard it all, uh, correctly. Uh, we are doing another Katarina game by a pro gamer. Last one was Skara. Well, for Skara it's kind of common. I don't know about uh, Voy Boy. Voy Boy normally plays top lane, so I wouldn't expect this to be his uh, his favorite. But yeah. He can probably play it. And as you can see, starting off with Boots and Potions. And yeah, don't say that every game just for the fun of it. It is actually true that Boots and Potions are just very, very good. And probably the best start for any AP. So um, yeah, you might have uh, noticed that in previous games. Yeah, a lot of people have been... Uh, sending me messages that they, since I, I've been hammering on that like every game for the last uh, hundred or so games uh, they have started to realize how important it is to have that sustain in lane and wow, <laughs> they lost that early on team fight so badly <laughs> oh man at least uh, the Corky is getting one kill back there but Corky is always oh, going to survive at very low HP and yeah a lot of skills were used there a lot of summoner skills and um, it is currently one versus two so it was really lucky for the enemy team that not a lot more of them got picked off but yeah a very nice engage by the enemies and um, <laughs> yeah you definitely messed up they were they were um, spread out, they weren't grouped up enough and um, they went into a, into a position where they had no vision. So they should have either created vision by uh, plopping down a ward or having clairvoyance or using a skill that provides vision or they should have just left it. So it seems he's playing under CLG Voiman, but I'm still going to call him Voiboy Boy because that's his name. It's, it's like with a bit, a Big Fat Gigi, he uh, changed his names a couple of times and um, yeah, he's still Big Fat Gigi, I'm sorry. Uh, he now goes by Big Fat LP because his name got flagged for being a, a curse word in Chinese, which it actually is. But um, yeah, his new name is the same, but then in, um, uh, hang on, that's Taiwanese, I believe. So the LP still is, um, uh, well, still means the same thing. Anyway, um, we are going into this game. So a lot of um, early game pressure from uh, Katharina on this, uh, this, this Vladimir. And that is actually surprising because Vladimir, he is ranged and he is having some trouble farming against this Katharina. And... Yeah, that's why I'm saying pressure. He doesn't really do anything, but just because he's so far forward, it means that he can actually do damage. And Vladimir is really afraid of that actually happening. So he stays back a little more than he should if he wanted to get perfect farm. And um, yeah, therefore, Katarina gets a lot more farm than she, uh, she normally would if uh, Vladimir actually went aggressive on her. But... Also, yeah, if Vladimir stays safe, I guess, so, yeah, he can be more aggressive, uh, he can harass a little bit more, but it's not happening for now. So, a nice Q there from Lee Sin, and he gets a whole lot of damage done, takes one tower shot, and then gets the hell out of there. So, this apparently is played on the Korean servers, I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it's just uh, that there are a lot of Koreans or Chinese or whatever. <laughs> On the American servers, so sorry about the, the jump there. Um, yeah, kind of malfunctioned here a little bit. And hopefully I will be in the same spot. But yeah, there may be um, a lot of Asians just on the American servers. I don't know what he's playing at. But I would think he plays on the North American servers. But yeah, well, you never know with these guys. So anyhow, uh, Lee Sin coming back in, and he is just going to uh, shop after this, getting a lot more 
sustain there. So a lot more health potions. One more ward just to make sure that he can see when someone is coming in. And really a lot of uh, Asians here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Alistar actually getting that kill. And he apparently found that very funny. So yeah, this um, uh, Void Boy is of course the new uh, top laner for uh, CLG. And yeah, I wanted to get some some uh, games from Hotshot. I'm going to do him afterwards because he wasn't really playing at this moment. And so I was looking uh, through the games, kind of recommended games I guess, that were on um, own 3 d or owned TV, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I found this one. I don't know how it's going to uh, end, of course, because that's the way it it goes for me. Uh, I cast games just because they're there, not because they're like the greatest game ever. Although I would like to f have, well, the greatest game ever on my uh, channel as well, of course. Because it is nice to have like the big games and be able to comment on those. But yeah, in, in general, I like the games that are, well, less pressure. But also have uh, lesser score lines. Because having a, um, yeah, like a, a 40 and 0, that's not really interesting. It's interesting when both teams are equally fed and the end game is interesting enough to. Uh, to kind of be like you still don't know what's wh who's going to win at the I don't know 40 minute mark preferably like 10 minutes before the game ends you still uh, would have a game where everyone can still win so uh, Voiboy yeah getting the shield from Morgana and that is going to be good enough to get out so everyone chasing him that was uh, Yeah, that was very nice. It, um, yeah, he wanted to see the ultimate from Morgana because they could have gotten a kill if she actually used that. But yeah, no mana. And yeah, it is indeed a very expensive ultimate. It is 150 mana. And most ultimates are like 100. There are several that are even more expensive. And... Yeah, that's because you don't want the champions to just use them uh, all the time. Obviously, in the late game, it doesn't matter anymore. And um, yeah, then uh, people can spam their ultimate whenever they want, or use their ultimate whenever they want. But it's mainly the the early game, like level six, seven. If people can use their ultimate and not get punished for the amount of mana, then obviously. Yeah, it's going to be uh, harder to work with for the opponents. And that's what makes a champion overpowered. Or underpowered if it's too uh, too expensive. And yeah, she has an ultimate here. But yeah, the ultimate not going to result in anything. Because of the very nice pull, I have to say. That was an, a pull exactly at the right moment. And yeah, therefore an ultimate exchanged for that uh, sanguine pool and wow there's the jungler once again that's the third time he ca he's come here and <laughs> he is going to get out of here and just go into his jungle again so he knows that there's a ward out because well that the reaction on um, on Katarina kinda showed that earlier and maybe they even saw it when he came back in lane that he actually bought a ward. The ward now timed out though. And um, yeah, he did use all of his health potions. So even though he bought five, he uh, he used all of them. And there you can once again see the uh, the power of sustain in this lane. Uh, or in the laning phase. And yeah, there's the uh, Lee Sin once again. And oh, the ultimates from Vladimir going down. And it's going to be good enough. Yep. 
That's a shame. But very well played on the enemy's part. They knew the ward timed out. And yeah. Even though the Lee Sin kind of showed himself before getting in lane. It was still very nicely played. So yeah, there was um, finally a good gank after three attempts. The fourth one actually stuck. And oh come on, just just get in there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of annoying when people just start reading the chat and things like that. But that's the way it goes with uh, with streams. And this is a recorded stream, so. It is still the same as the stream, but it has the advantage that when it crashes, like it did, uh, I can actually just go back to the place where it left off and um, re-record it. I can also pause it and rewind it and things like that, but I'm not going to. Uh, unless something really amazing happens, and then I want to see it again, of course. But yeah, that's the beauty of the spectator mode replays, and I really wish there was as good a community for that as there is with StarCraft StarCraft 2 then uh, with StarCraft 2 the uh, high level uh, or the high ELO uh, replays are well they're, they're shared all the time everyone has uh, access to high ELO replays and yeah it's just uh, that in uh, League of Legends that is just not the case I don't know why he yeah, he wouldn't just jump on him. He took a lot of tower shots there for no good reason. And <laughs> trying to juke around the the Lee Sin here. And he is going to manage to actually get out. Very nicely done. Of course Lee Sin didn't have any skills left. But dodging that first Q was major. And then after that he... Um, he shunned Poe to a minion to get out of the range of uh, Lee Sin and he could just walk out because running through the minions is well very hard to do obviously for Lee Sin without his jumps and by the time he would have gotten through uh, Katarina would have gotten out and nothing would have happened. So jumping to the minion and um, going to walk back in lane and apparently Reading the chat again. So, ultimate going off, doing a little bit of damage to Vladimir. Vladimir using his pull a little bit too late, but he should be okay for now. He takes a little bit of damage from the bouncing blade. But that's alright, he uh, he can take a little bit of damage, he has his Q to heal back up, plus he has some health potions. One health potion left on Katrina, but Katrina now has Spell Vamp. A Spell Vamp will do a lot in getting her, or keeping her healthy in the lane, so giving her Sustain. Sustain is the ability to uh, stay in lane, to keep high health and um, yeah, so Health regen is an ability that will keep you in lane, will keep you healthy. Uh, also mana regen of course, and then spell vamp and uh, lifesteal are the same thing. So they also provide health regen and therefore are sustain or help you sustain in lane. Whatever you want to, uh, to use that or however you want to use that. Um, it is um, kind of, yeah, it's really important to have that ability to stay in lane and to keep fighting. Even though, oh, yeah, he catches the Vladimir there, but couldn't get damage done. But still, Vladimir has to run all the way back and then recall at uh, the third turret. Me meaning that he will lose even more uh, time in lane and the minions were already at the turret. So that's great. Uh, he's probably afraid that the jungler will come in here. If there was no jungler, he would have attacked this turret and would have gotten probably about 75% of that turret health. But because there is a jungler and there is the possibility of him running into the jungler, 
he has to back out and he wants to stay safe. Of course, there's also the Twisted Fate Ultimate that can come in and uh, and kill him. And yeah, we are just running back in lane here. Once again, checking the chat. I don't know if he's answering questions. It doesn't seem to be the way uh, the way he uh, does that. But yeah, if he was answering questions, he would talk a little bit more. And he's normally just playing music. Which is also why I can't put any um, any sound on my on this chat or on this uh, uh, replay. No, on this video. So I would like to have the game sounds, of course, but uh, well, some of the uh, high elo, well, some of the streamers will talk all the time, like Skara, which is very entertaining. Don't get me wrong, but it's very annoying if you want to comment the game. <laughs> But he is a very good player to watch if you want to get better at um, solo mid. So uh, mid champions like Katrina, like um, yeah, Katrina is his favorite. So like Cartus, uh, uh, things like that. He, he plays those a lot. And if you want to get better at those, go watch his stream. And you have people like Voiboy, who um, or Big Fat Gigi, who always play music. And then of course you have someone like Hotshot who uh, yeah, tends to not say a whole lot and then when something happens, mostly when he gets killed, he screams a lot. And yeah, that's of course... <coughs> Sorry about that. That's of course uh, very hard to deal with too if you want to have game sounds in your game because then you will have to cut out the parts where he starts to yell at people and start to say that they're morons and uh, yeah that's just the way it is it's it's the life of a caster man it's so hard no. <laughs> it's all good I just wish there was a site that actually had these uh, tournament replays on them but yeah I guess this game just isn't as popular for replays as um, StarCraft is. Well, StarCraft is more of a, uh, a game people watch than uh, League of Legends is. I mean, League of Legends has a lot of uh, of players because it's it's fun to play. StarCraft, in my opinion, not as fun to play. It's also because I'm bad at it. I know that. I won't ever say that I'm good at StarCraft unless I actually learn to be good at StarCraft. But um, yeah, I don't enjoy just macroing. I enjoy watching the fights and in League of Legends you get to watch the fights. And that's exactly what is uh, appealing to me. That's also what's appealing to StarCraft 2 as um, a watcher sport. StarCraft 1 as well. But um, as a, a, a watcher, so as a, a spectator, it is really entertaining to watch uh, the well this game and StarCraft 2. So they get the kill on uh, Vladimir there. But yeah, in, uh, in StarCraft 2, if you watch the game, so if you uh, get the replays, then you can see what's going on without having to uh, concentrate on uh, on macroing and uh, doing things in your base and blah, 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 blah. You just get to see all of the nice fights. And I like the fights. I'm th That's just the way it goes for me. For me, the, the fights are wha what makes a game interesting and oh come on get him oh man well at least he gets the kill back but that that shouldn't have gone down like that he waited too long he should have ran into the bush immediately oh yeah we can actually rewind that if a couple of seconds uh, we are at 28 so hey okay it actually says I'm over here. I don't know how far you can watch, but it says we're at almost 29 minutes, and this says that we are 25 minutes. So, anyway, let's just rewind a little bit. No, no, no. We were way further ahead. Did he just get that kill? No, he did not. I don't know. I don't know where we were. 
Oh, this is where they got the kill. So we were actually at 29 minutes. Huh. So this would be just about where this fight happens. And we will see, yeah, <coughs> here comes the the, the, the Lee Sin. Lee Sin using uh, all of his skills. He, he doesn't use his ultimate because he wants to use his ultimate when Kate, uh, Katarina uses her ultimate. And this is where he made the mistake. Hang on. I mean, yeah, unfortunately I cannot really uh, slow it down or, well, position the cursor pretty correctly. It's an hour long video. Well, not this game, but the video is an hour long, so doesn't say when the game ends. But he should have ran into that bush with the the Lee Sin. So the Lee Sin just is just going to walk out in a moment. So this is all good. It's all good. He does more damage than the Lee Sin does. And here he should have followed him into the bush. He dis doesn't have his ultimate because well he just used that. But by walking into the bush, he doesn't allow the Lee Sin to recharge his skills. And now, Lee Sin is going to come out. He's going to immediately jump to a minion with his shield on. And so he has that shield, but he also has his Q charged up again. And he's going to start taking turret damage. And obviously, without any skills available, he's not going to be able to, uh, to damage enough. Taking another tur turret shot, should have just farmed. He should have been happy with the fact that Lee Sin is out of the lane, and he can get the the free minions. And then, yeah, obviously he gets killed here, but he could have avoided getting killed. He could have also grabbed the kill. But yeah, well, he's very happy just getting that kill apparently for so the one for one trade. It was just not a good play. But yeah, well, and now I know that uh, some of you will say, well, you can't do anything any better because he is a very good player, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, he should have played that differently. And no matter if I can't pull it off, I mean, I am terrible at StarCraft 2. I'm terrible at League of Legends as well, but... Uh, I'm terrible at StarCraft 2. That doesn't mean that I don't know when a strategy is going to work. The same works here. I mean, I'm a terrible League of Legends player compared to this guy at least. And still I know when he makes a mistake. And that has nothing to do with my skill uh, skills as a player. It has to do with my skills as a commentator. Or as an analyzer. Or whatever you want to call that. And he <laughs> waits a long time before he actually goes and gets this kill, but they're still going to grab it. At least I'm assuming. And oh, yeah, he gets killed because of the ultimate. He took a few tower shots for no good reason. And oh, this is going to be bad. So Lee Sin coming in with... Uh, with an Oracle's Elixir. And that means he's now going to be able to pick off the wards before he comes to gank. And he knows when he gets spotted. But yeah, that um, that was mainly the fault of him, well, of Voiboy, not engaging early enough. He wanted to get the minions and either he shouldn't have engaged at all. So just go for the minions and stay back. Or he should have engaged straight away. Because the problem that you have here is that, um, yeah, because he did both, he did a little bit of both, and therefore the two allies overextended into turret range. He got killed by the Vladimir ultimate, and that left them as uh, 1.1 or something like that. I think the um, Nautilus was at like 10% health. So 1.1 versus 2. And two champions at full health coming in. That is not going to uh, be good. Obviously the uh, Nautilus still had his shields. And that was kind of useful. But it's not uh, very useful if he gets killed afterwards. Or if he gets killed straight off. 
And yeah, so it's a one for three trade. And in my opinion, he should have engaged earlier. So anyhow, he now has his... Um, uh, come on, what's it called? I want to say Rage Blade, but that's not what it is. It is a Gunblade. Hextag Gunblade. He has that completed. And with the Hextag Gunblade completed, he should be able to do a whole lot of um, of regen. So, um, Spell Vamp, Lifesteal, General Health Regeneration. As well as he has an extra slow, some extra damage. And all in all, that's just very good if you're trying to get a kill straight off with a champion like Katrina. No, not going to work, Mr. TF. I think that was TF. And are the enemies really going for bear for dragon here? No, no, no. They want to go for dragon. Okay, that's cool too. So, um... Yeah, but a little bit of a fight going off over here, and yeah, Katharina going pretty low. She loses the turret, so she has to run way, way, way back, but she's going to be safe for now. Still had her uh, her abilities to leech a little bit of life back, but Vladimir obviously do doesn't want to overextend with no enemies visible on the map. Uh, they were all at Dragon, but he doesn't know that, unless he has a ward there and actually checked. It is 12 to 12, we are currently 3 to 4. 3 and 4. And, um, yeah, hopefully he will pick up his play a little bit, because he's making a little bit too many mistakes for my, f uh, for, for my taste. But, yeah, well... Um, yeah, it's just that, um, the, yeah, the, the, the low level ELO players that I normally cast, they get a lot of, uh, of crap from people commenting on the videos that they suck at playing their champions. And then I get someone like this on the high ELO games and he makes the same mistakes. He overextends the, all the time. He, uh, doesn't award. He, uh, yeah, okay, he does ward, but you get the point. He uh, he makes a lot of mistakes that should have been played differently. He gets killed by a Lee Sin that is at like 50 health when he's at almost full health. That is not a good play. No matter how you look at that, that is not good play. You know you can, in a 1v1 fight, you should never die to any champion at 50 HP if you're full health. Not even Trindamir. And I'm saying that because people will start reminding me that yeah Trindamir works best at low health man. And um yeah Kartus that's the no 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 not even Kartus. Kartus at 50 HP should be killed and you should never die to his ultimate uh, if you're full HP because that was my statement. So hang on we have some legs going on and hopefully it will pick back up. Oh, come on. Nope, it's stuck. There we go. So yeah, the um, the team fight going off here and finally they get some kills going. And oh no, he dies. I couldn't really tell what was going on. It's way too messy. Which is why I normally set all of the, uh, the the particles to minimal, so that you have as, as low uh, particle count as possible, and um, w while still seeing everything that's going on. But the amount of particles they make up for these uh, these skills is ridiculous. It is ridiculous because the particles, the amount of particles you need to actually see what's going on is way lower than anything else or anything that's on the screen and in my opinion it's just annoying in team fights with like four or more players involved and especially a five versus five team fight you can't see what's going on but yeah that's just me maybe you like it like this but it just becomes one big mess of uh, of all kinds of, uh, well, different colors, sparks, and um, 
well, I don't know. It's just, it's not my taste. I personally prefer it to be, um, well, not to be spectacular, but to be, well, understandable. You, so that you can see which skills are used on which champion and uh, at what points. And if it's just one big mess of colored particles, you can't really see. Unless you have the sound turned on, but as I said, I can't have the sound turned on because I will get in trouble. I can actually turn it on and um, listen to it myself, but as I said, he uh, has music on. So that doesn't work. So anyhow, we're going to um, to engage on this enemy team, it seems. And Alastar immediately getting nuked down, but that means that they spent a lot of damage on that. And is this TF actually going down? Um, no. <laughs> that is a short answer. Don't know if that was TF, by the way. The one that I meant. But TF is still alive. So is Katharina, so not anymore. Oh, so low. <laughs> oh man, don't know who that was, but they definitely got out at super low HP. I think that was Lee Sin, but... Yeah, so we're 16 to 21, as you can see. 1 and 4 Nautilus, 1 and 3 Alistar, and nobody really uh, positive, well, nobody positive, period. Uh, 7 and 5 on, I think that was their bottom laner then. I forgot who that was. Corky? I want to say Corky, but it's probably not. Oh, is she? No, she's not going to get anything done. Wow, yeah, it is Corky. Corky is the only one positive on this team, and yeah, they're going to grab a Baron and a kill, and maybe a second kill here on Alistar, and they may actually get a third kill on Nautilus. Yep, Alistar, Nautilus, both of them going down. So, a little bit too aggressive, and it seems that everyone is mid. Wow, that was um, kind of fail. Kind of very much fail. And let's see if he uh, he can actually make something out of this. Because he has 162 minions, 4 kills, 5 assists. He should have enough gold saved up. Or, well, not so much saved up, but invested in his items. To actually make something out of this. To make something work. But it seems that uh, he can't get it to... Uh, well, he can't get his damage on the correct champions. And he dies every time before he can kill someone. Which is kind of sad. But that's the way it is. So yeah, going to uh, uh, farm up a little bit, uh, not getting the last one because he sees there's a team fight over here. And are we going to see some kills finally? Come on, get the kill on Asriel. Asriel does get killed by him, uh, only, well, he dies himself. Once again, not getting the kill before he gets killed. And there it goes. Oh, he gets out, fortunately. No, he's not out yet. Sona may still catch him, but he flashes over the wall. Oh, it's a surrender. Wow, what's with my games today? Everything is a defeat. So annoying. I'm going to continue doing this until I find one where someone actually wins. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. GG.